Kyle and Sydney. How are y'all? Doing great. We are wonderful. How are you? We going to start by getting all up in y'all business. We, we get in everybody's business who comes on and asks the question that everybody wants to know. How long have y'all been together? And when did y'all first meet? How did y'all first meet? Four, five years gone. Four and a half. Four and a, it's about three, five. Yeah. It's next three, Saturday makes four and a half. Yes. So, But going on five years. Yeah. And we met online on an app. Location-based app. Christian Mingle. <laughs> <laughs> sure, we'll go with that. Let's go with that. So, um, being very transparent, yes, we met on Grindr. Um, we talked for like two months before even meeting. Um, just, I don't know, it was just very, um, very an open, honest kind of talk. And then, I remember, it was one night I was coming home and... I had all, because we met, like, this is like October, so I had all my snacks. I was about to watch my horror movies and everything. Just start talking to him. We start talking. He had lost his aunt, like, the week prior. So he was kind of going through it. So I had a free night, and I, was, and I didn't have anything to do the day after. So I had even told him, I was like, hey, you know, I don't know if this helps, but I have some cheap whiskey and I have some good conversation. Um, I just know that if you're down for that, you can, you're more than welcome to come over here and we can just talk, just get your mind off of things. Something just tells me that you shouldn't be alone. And, and something really in my heart, you know, I always say that um, the people in L like try to be a good person in LA because people LA always gets this rap about, oh, everybody's so fake, everybody's so phony. I know there are good, genuine people here. So I always try to attract that by being that. Mm -hmm. So um, he came over and then he basically just didn't leave until the next night, Monday night. So, um, yeah. And I mean, it kind of has been from there. It's, it's been it. it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what was it that let you guys know that y'all should go a little further with with that from that initial meeting. We were just talking. We were just getting to know each other. In all honesty, it was just a really organic, like genuinely getting to know somebody, making a friend, like conversing about topics that we both share similarities on, talking about music. You know, we literally just talked for hours. And then we like did some corny stuff. We we slow danced, <laughs> which was random. <laughs> And it was like, it was like, honestly, it was like a first date. Yeah. But we didn't go anywhere. It's like we went to a bar and we just had a conversation. And we just talked and we got to know each other. And that's usually what I need because I'm more of a mentally stimulated type of person. So, like, the physical is anything. Like, anybody can look like something and not have nothing else, much else to offer. But, um, if you have substance and it's a nice package, ain't nobody going to turn that away. So like, and it was nice to, and genuinely refreshing to meet somebody like who had something more to say. We very much had different impressions of each other before we met we because I definitely thought he was like some meathead who lived in the gym and he was under the weird impression that I was a barb of all things. I'm like, just like, sir. I, I don't even like Mickey Mouse. I thought he was a barb. I thought. That <laughs> wait a minute. Wait a minute. Talk, wait a minute. Wait a minute. going to talk about with Nikki or Beyonce. None of, and, none of that. And, you know, I don't know what it was, but I was just like, yeah, like, I just felt like, I don't know, which also, which goes to show you that, you know, um, perceptions are just that perceptions. Yes. So, yeah, um, I think that was like, and also, we'll, we, it, what kind of intrigued me about him was that as much as we had similar, we had similar things, we we're also very different. Mm. And I like someone who's very different to me because I like to be taught things. And I like to look at the other side of things of being like, oh, okay, you know, I normally look at it like this way, but you look at it like this way. And I never looked at it like that. So, you know, it just keeps a balance in self. What was that song that y'all slow danced to? You know what? I think it was. It was that JoJo and um, what's his name? Say so. Yes. Oh my god. Yes. Okay. <laughs> yeah. 
PJ Morton. PJ Morton. Morton and JoJo say so. I'm so happy that you remember that. <laughs> See, now y'all got to slow dance again. <laughs> Deep in the recess. That was, uh, yeah. yeah, he was hardcore on his JoJo stuff right then. I so. was, yeah. Very, very much. Still am. But yeah. Um, yeah, PJ Morton and JoJo. Yeah. Oh, I remember that. <laughs> What about people's perceptions about uh, apps like Grinder? How does your relationship and other relationships that have stood the test of, of time, how did they challenge that notion that it's only for one thing? Honestly, you're only going to get well, get out of it what you're putting into it. So like, okay. if, that's, if that's all you're going on there for, that's all you're really going to get unless you're looking for something else. And it doesn't even have to necessarily be that you're shopping in that market. Like, legit, you could just be perusing. You could just be, hey, I'm I'm bored. I'm going to kill some time. And we all know those apps are time killers. Like, legitimately, you could be on wasted two, three hours and not even realize. I've been over here shuffling through the shelves for two hours, and I ain't bought nothing. I ain't even put nothing in the cart. <laughs> <laughs> I'm on there. You know, so, like, legitimately. And, like I said, you get what you put out of it. And... I'm not a person who, when I did have my time that was I was on the apps, I'm not going to be like, you're going you're gonna to get frustrated with me before before anything ever happens because, like, legitimately, you're going to feel like you're being vetted, but not in a, not in a probing sort of way, but I do want, like, a, genu a general sense of comfortability and familiarity with people. Mm -hmm. But if you catch me on the right night, like, it might be a real quick three, four messages, two or three picks, and then we, we finna do whatever we're going to do. But that's just how it works is what you're putting into it is what you're going to get out of it. Right, 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 right. And I think for me, I always just have an open mind and just put my genuine self out there. And whoever clings to it, then great. Whoever doesn't cling to it, then it's just not in the cards for us to have a dynamic. And that is A-OK. -okay. You know, I'm not going to go and, you know, cry about it. It's just like, it just wasn't meant to be that. And that's fine. And there are people that I've, you know, I've either reached out to or like, you know, they've reached out to me and then I didn't respond. But then we meet in person and they're like, oh, no, you're cool. You know, I think that's just one avenue. It's not the only avenue of things. And I think people just because everyone's we're in an age where everyone's constantly on your phone, you get to you get to that point where you think that that is the only avenue. It's like, you know, you can still meet people out if you go outside. You can still meet people at these random places. Like, you know, I've met people at supermarkets. I've met people, you know, just at the bar. I've met people, you know, I've met people at funerals. So, <laughs> you know. At the funeral? Listen, get it how you get it. <laughs> um, You know, aside from fear of rejection, why do you think, Black gay men are hesitant to approach each other. And what are some of the ways that we can solve those issues? That's a loaded question. It's a very, very layered, layered and loaded question. I would say my main thing is because I feel like a lot of Black people are probed on, like you said, fear of rejection. Yeah. Also, being the rejector. The power dynamic. The power dynamic of That's being the rejector. Huge, huge aspect so of a It's like, anyone. oh baby, I would like I will say in a heartbeat because I can sit back and tell, like, I'm gonna boast in my friends, oh yeah, he tried to hit me up and I rejected him. You're not gonna say I tried to hit him up and he left me in red. Oh, so it's an ego thing in there. Absolutely. <laughs> men are driven by ego. Yeah, and that's just men. That's not even black gay men. That's, that's just men in men, general. Period. And when you realize so, that, you know. Um, and I also feel like for me being a professional dancer, I think like I am, I have to check my ego and have to build a thick skin. Just that's part of my career because I am constantly going on castings, going to auditions to where people are telling me no. Mm -hmm. I see, I hear a lot more no's than I hear yes. And that's just the way that my career is set up. So someone tell me no, okay, it, it doesn't take anything away from me. I'm like, oh, okay, I think, you, like, I always used to say when I would go and, like, approach people, I'd be like, hey, how are you? What's your name? Yo, I think you're really handsome. You know, do with that information what you want to, but I think you're really handsome. And either you're going to be like, oh, so up. Like, you know, what's going on? Or you'll be like, thank you. I appreciate it. Have a good night. Now, some people can't handle thank you, have a good night. 
They're going to be like, what you mean? Thank you. Have a good night. Thank you. Have a good night. That's what you mean. That's what I, that's what I mean. <laughs> you know, I, I, just, I really just treat it like I treat it like a regular audition when when I would approach people. Um, you know, I just didn't put any I don't put a lot of things and now. I'm all for being inten being intentional with people. But if it's just an initial meeting, there's nothing to be intentional with. Because I don't know you. Yeah, like when, you don't know even me. when him and I got together, <laughs> there was no, it was not being, it was me trying to be a good person to someone who I felt was a good person. And I, and even from our first night, I knew that he was special and nowhere, nowhere near knew what the impact in my life that he was going to have. I just knew he was special and I knew that he needed good people around him and I wanted to be one of those good people with that genuine, that genuine want. And where that took us, Lord knows. Like, but I just knew that I wanted to start from there. And I feel like people have this tendency to not want to start from a genuine perspective in giving people the choice. Because like we say, people often like to be the rejecter as opposed to rejected. So, you know, I feel like sometimes that it starts with that. Just a genuine want to you know, just see where things goes with that dynamic of that person. But everybody can be like, yeah, they're <laughs> insensitive. They don't want. They don't want to be rejected. They don't want to look rejected in front of their peers. They always mm -hmm. want to say face, especially because this is Los Angeles. No, nobody want to look like, oh, I'm getting turned down left and right, yeah. or I can't pull who I want to pull. So it's very yeah. much like, and that's and that's a big thing in gay life. The gay same life person, is, oh, if, if I want to pull them, they don't even care about anything else. Oh, but I can pull them. All the I same pull. person who rejects you in public will be hitting you up on them apps hours later because they really do like you. Because they really do like you, and they wanted to come off like they were the better person or they had more to offer. <laughs> it's such a game. All these personas. Everybody in LA is cosplaying people. Like nobody is like a serious person. Sometimes it's like it's really hard to find. <laughs> but they be out here putting on like, like the like, like I, my good fine. friend, my good friend fine. Dan Lamar just said on his podcast. Uh, <laughs> 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 he say refurbished. Oh, they yeah. come out here and they get refurbished. Yeah, like, for real. like yeah. you know, you're not this person. Next to overcoming fear of rejection. How do we create authenticity in our dating lives and in our relationships? I mean, I feel like authenticity has to start with yourself. You know, you have to look in the mirror and, you know, take away all of the things that you want to do. And you want, and you're just like, who do I want to be? Who is the person that I want to be? You know, um, if being a, I know, you know, the bitter pill to swallow is that being a good person is not at the top of the priority list for a lot of people. I mean, that in, especially in a city, in a career-driven city, like career-driven cities like LA, New York, Atlanta, DC, like being a good person is not top priority. And everybody swears that they're a good person. And just because they're a good person or you may feel like you're a good person, that does not mean that that comes off. Right. Um, I feel like being like authenticity has to start with oneself. Who do you authentically want to be? Because if you authentically are not interested in being a good person, that's okay. Just find other people that are authentically on the same wavelength as you are. And then y'all do y'all's thing. And then I'm gonna sit over here and do my thing. <laughs> <laughs> now, now, Kyle, do you think that's really possible? Do do people who we just gonna go ahead and say it? People who ain't shit. Do you think they go around looking for other people who are no? Because they're no. getting they're getting so they're they're. That's I think that they true. tend to get get a lot and reap a lot of the benefits from from being that way or selling this dream or giving yeah. away a lot of these things with these ulterior motives. So. I don't think that's going to happen, but I feel like when you're saying authenticity, the first way to get authenticity or the fixed authenticity is with self. 
Mm-hmm. You have to be the person. You have to be an authentic person. Even in my relationship, I, you know, I will always say, you know, I was who I was from day one. <laughs> I never tried to sell you a dream of things like, you know, of I was this person, I was that person, I was this person, I was that person. And that gives people the very honest, the very honest, like, place to pick and choose whether or not you want to deal with this person. Yes. You know, I think that that's such an important thing Mm. to give people that choice. Okay. Sydney, authenticity, how do we create it in ourselves? How do we find and create it in our relationships and, and, and in our dating lives? I'm the type of person who's very careful who I'm going to be sharing space with, sharing my energy with. Yes. Inauthentic people, narcissists, toxic people, those are all people who are, they're all, all strains of the same virus. They're all like energy leeches. Like they're going to, they surround themselves or try to place themselves in a place where people are going to be pouring into them or or giving them access or they're going to be getting some, they're going to be monetizing whatever relationships they develop, whatever they're cultivating. All you have to do is see the patterns of what they're monetizing from you. Like, what is this person getting from me? Because like in a true fr- friendship, relationship, any type of actual connection, you would actually pour into each other. Yes. You're getting something from each other. You're feeding off of each other. And that's beyond and, romantic relationships. Yes, that is friendships. Friendships, is, families, yeah. whatever. Like if you're not, if it's not reciprocal, if there's no reciprocity, you can't do anything with that person. Like. And sometimes it takes a while to see it. A lot of people don't pick up on things like that really quickly. Like your bullshit detector is a little low. You probably need to get it tweaked. But like for real, you can see it a mile away once you know how to see it. Like it's unmistakable. And as far as creating authenticity within your relationships, it's just like like he said, you got to come being a genuine real person yourself if you're going to expect that from somebody that you're going to enter into a partnership with like i personally legitimately don't enter into any relationships without being able to be friends with this person above anything else that's the foundation for all of my romantic relationships i've ever had like i cannot be with someone who i cannot be friends with if not best friends because the relationship dynamic i say this all the time i'm not I don't give relationship advice, but I tell everyone the same. Yeah, we both things. we both stand on that. Like, <laughs> legitimately, I'm not telling you because you have to create your dynamic that works for you. And everything is not a cookie cutter type situation. Every relationship is different. And things that go on in, in this relationship may not go on in this relationship, but they are both just as happy. And you can't weigh in on something that you're not a party to. So <laughs> you need to be friends with your partner. A hundred percent. If you can't be friends, you shouldn't be together because the relationship dynamic that you have with a friend and the relationship dynamic that you have with your partner are two very different things. Or something that's based solely on sexual attraction. So like you give special consideration and listen to and lean into a friend in a different way that you do with your romantic partner. You allow more things or give more, give more grace possibly to your friends than you would to your partner. Mm. You have to be able to merge those two things. If this one doesn't exist, this one is not going to last. Like you can have, you can be attracted to each other. The sex is amazing, you know, but like one day we ain't going to be able to have sex. One day we're going to be sitting in a rocking chair just on a porch and I need to genuinely be able to crack up and enjoy your conversation and talk about the good times and all of that with you. And I'm not going to have that with somebody who all we had in common was we, we like to fuck. Of course, you know, when, when any two people come together, uh, there will be some challenges. So, you know, in being together for this long, what have been some of your biggest challenges and how have you overcome them together? <laughs> I'm going to let you say that. I mean... <laughs> Honestly, we've had hurdles. Not nothing that's been been like crazy. I mean, we've had situations, but like honestly, when we first moved in together, 
that was a lot. <laughs> we spent a lot of time. And Already. he pretty much lived with me through the pandemic. But to actually even and that's why we were together for three years before we even came close to even like cohabitating. It's just like it's not that time. So when we did finally cohabitate, it's like, okay, this is what you're like when I'm not around, or this is your actual home life. Now he's seen that we both had that level of comfortability, but it's very different when it's just like, okay, this is a hundred percent your house my house, this is the way I come and go, this is the way you come and go, and just getting used to that, you know? So that did, that was a little rough the first couple of months, just figuring those things out. And we had some issues early on. Um, so let's call it an entanglement situation. That's what we'll, that's what we'll call it. And it it put us it gave us perspective it, honestly it pushed us closer together it made us so much it, stronger it literally it literally made us like and reflect yes. on what we were doing with each other because yeah. i don't think that we were seeing each other and we were dating intentionally but like it gave us another level of perspective it made us sit back and be like okay so this is like a serious situation like yeah. honestly because i'm the type of person i'm aquarius everything is logical to me like i'm gonna rationalize it down I've already run this scenario 47 times in my brain before we even actually had it. So it's just like, okay, so now we're here. Which decision am I going to make that I already seen the pathway that it's going to lead to? And I'm a cancer. I'm ready to fight. Oh, ready to cry. Which one? Both. Oh, no. <laughs> same time. Both at the same at the time. Same damn time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we did. We dealt with that. That. Um, yeah, I feel like um, our, you know, another... Thing, another challenge that we had was um, that I go out. He goes out too, and we're both social. Um, but I go out and I like to stay out. Mm -hmm. And I'll be out. And he gets tired. So, you know, when we were, when I was with him and spent a lot of time with him at his place, because my stuff was there, I would have to go with him. So then when we got to the point where we were living together, it was like, no, I actually don't have to go with you. I can Uber myself back home. So it was getting past this whole thing of feeling like, oh, okay, just because we came together doesn't mean we have to leave together and you are your own person and you can hang out. And then he's now he's like, listen, I'm leave you ass where you at. And I'm like, great, babe. See you when I get home. <laughs> and it's just Be safe. Yeah. And it's really, it's just that understanding of coming to terms that, you know, you guys are two different people. And yeah. you know, yeah, you just just that you're two different people. And, you know, there's still things you don't you don't have figured out because I feel like for a lot of people, they feel like four and a half, five years is like, oh yeah, that's a long time. Y'all just y'all got a lockdown. No. <laughs> Cause even my, my my friends that have been together for like 13, 14, 20, 25 years that I know of, they're like, oh yeah, y'all are still figuring things out. And they, and they always say, like, wait till you get to that like seven to ten year mark. Y'all are going, that's really gonna challenge y'all. Y'all are gonna hate each other. I was like, not like hate each other, but it's just really something that is going to challenge y'all because so many things are coming down as far as like presentation wise, especially when you live together. That was another thing. When you live together, it's like you really see this person as this person. You see them when they're in their happy stage. You see them when they're in their not so happy stage. You see them when they're in their lazy and uninspired stage. You see them when they're in their very motivated stage. You see all like the ebbs and flows of what makes them them. Mm -hmm. You know, um, I think that is like, that's like a big one. I don't think that was a, really a problem for us because we tend to stay, we tend to have a pretty good balance of like, listen, I'm getting up and I ain't doing nothing and I don't want you, <laughs> I, don't, I don't need to hear from you. <laughs> I ain't doing nothing. I'm not going to be productive. Yeah, today. I'm not going to be productive today. And you just understand that I am not going to be productive today. But, you know, if it turns out to be like a certain amount of days, and it's like, all right, what we doing? 
you know, um, I think we have that good balance. So like, they're like, listen, you ain't got to be productive today. You do what you need to do for yourself. And then it's like, all right, you've been unproductive for a couple of days now. Let's get up. Let's get active. Let's do something. And it's really not even something like you have to like, oh, or you have to do this. It's just like, let's just go up. Let's get some sunshine. Let's just, like, get some sunshine. Let's go out. There's a bike path right by our house. Let's go walk the bike path and just talk and just be. We end these conversations with a Joseph Bean quote, which is Black men loving Black men is the revolutionary act. And so, Kyle and Sydney, in your opinions and in your experience, why is Black men loving Black men so revolutionary? To be a Black man, to find another Black man, and you can actually genuinely love and respect each other. It's like lightning in a bottle. Mm. Yeah, I think for me, it's because Black men, we by society, we were not ever taught or encouraged to love or even receive love. And that's not what we saw. That's not what we, you know, what we were told to us, you know, it was, you know, don't be soft, don't be soft, don't be soft, don't be soft. You a man, you a black man and all of this. And yes, there are a lot of points where we have to be strong and we have to develop our strength, but we also have to develop our vulnerability because that makes our strength even better. And I think that that's why it's such a revolutionary act to have two people from that same, those same odds against them and seeing seeing uh seeing love in each other and giving love to each other and that's something that's so special to me and something that i hold in my heart so dear um you know i will never say never but i just could never really see myself not giving my whole heart to a black man because i was raised by a black man from a father one of my older cousin, he was the one who taught me about gay life and he's a black man. My grandfather was a freedom writer. He's a black man. So like, I have so many black, I stand on so many wonderful black men's shoulders. Um, like that I would only want to love and pour into another black man.